Hello and welcome to this service of Christian worship. The Wabash Avenue Presbyterian Church family welcomes you as part of the great cloud of witnesses. Although we are separated uh, temporally and physically, we are nonetheless one in Christ. And so we welcome those from our congregation and beyond uh, to worship with us today. Our prayer to prepare for worship is the following. Please pray with me. O oh God, I give myself to thee this day, thine only, thine ever to be. Amen. Our call to worship, it may be recited uh, if you have downloaded our worship order uh, in the uh, alternating lines. Let us worship God. The Lord Jesus Christ is our shepherd. He lays down his life for the sheep. The Lord Jesus Christ is our shepherd. He knows us and we belong to him. The Lord Jesus Christ is our shepherd. He speaks and we listen for his voice. Our opening hymn will be sung by Brendan Young. It is Because You Live, O Christ. Because you live, O Christ, the garden of the world has come to flower. The darkness of the tomb is flooded with your resurrection power. The stone has Hear now our call to confession. Psalm 23 tells us that the Lord is our shepherd. Therefore, we shall not want. We shall lack for nothing. Our every need is already taken care of, including our need for forgiveness. So trusting in God's mercy and love, let us confess our sins. Gracious God, you are our good shepherd. You humbly call us to follow you but we prefer paths of our own choosing. You invite us to rest and keep Sabbath with you, but we have made work our God. You readily supply our every need, but we are too busy looking out for number one 
to receive your grace. O oh God, forgive us. Help us to change. Place a new and right spirit within us and gather us into your fold. Amen. And now let us confess our sins silently before God. Amen. Hear the good news. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. May the God of mercy who forgives you all sins strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Please join me now in our prayer for illumination. Gracious God, grant a stillness of mind and purity of heart to receive the good news this day. Amen. Our scripture today comes from the Hebrew Bible. It is the 23rd Psalm. So listen now for God's word as it speaks to you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. As a farm kid, I loved spring, when our sheep would have their baby lambs. These energetic lambs would get together in clusters and they'd all bound around the pastures, just springing up into midair. It was a real joy for my father and me to care for them. But how did those lambs experience my father's care? Two weeks after their birth, each lamb's tail was cut off. Now, why on earth did we do that? Well, because long woolly tails retain waste, which attract flies, which result in larvae, which results in damage to the sheep's health, it results in pain, disease, even death. But all of that was unknown to those lambs which knew only pain attributable to my father and me. In time, we weaned the growing adolescent lambs from their mothers, from their source of sustenance, protection, and life. Weaning from milk to grass helps lambs grow. Still, I remember the plaintive cries of the lambs calling and calling and calling for their mothers. Again, it was a painful but necessary part of their tending. Grass has parasites which mature within sheep, siphoning energy and threatening life. So dad and I would regularly dispense a medical agent to disperse the parasites. We called it worming the sheep. We did it by inserting a huge bolus down their unwilling throats. All our sheep knew that they were literally having something shoved down their throat. Then the mature female flock was segregated from the ram. Animal impulses were controlled in order to preserve life. Fragile lambs born in the middle of winter die very easily. But most lambs born in warmer spring weather survive. 
but our sheep didn't know that when their strongest desire was denied. In the spring, each sheep was sheared to remove its thick winter wool coat. That must have felt good with hot weather upon us and when that arrived, just to be free of that heavy wool blanket. Except for the shearing though, our sheep probably only perceived our care as pain. We love the 23rd Psalm because it describes a compassionate God who lovingly shepherds our lives. But how does that square with our lived experience of God who doesn't always answer prayers, at least in the way we think they should be answered? How do we reconcile this scripture's description of providence when we experience months or years of wandering in the wilderness through an illness or divorce or downsizing or a child's wrong choices? Maybe some, not all, but maybe some of what we experience as pain or perceive as abandonment by God or neglect by our Savior, maybe some of what is going on is blessing, blessing that we cannot yet recognize. Looking back on the hardest times in my life, I can now see how richly God cared for me during those desolations. Then I thought God abandoned me. Now I see how God shepherded me. The Danish philosopher Soren Kierkegaard famously said, life is live forwards and learn backwards. Translation, only in retrospect do we truly see how God acts to move us from disaster to blessing, from despair to hope from death to life. The spiritual director, Margaret Gunther, counsels, when in doubt, I always assume that God is at work. When in doubt, I always assume that God is at work. That's good wisdom. When you are struggling or doubting, wondering, Lord, I'm doing all I can here. Where on earth are you? It's a good bet to trust that God indeed is at work in ways you may not yet perceive or understand, but in ways you can trust are gracious to save and love you. How is God shepherding you in this pandemic? What present pains might be camouflaged conduits of God's care? Most of us are consuming far less takeout. Maybe being weaned off the Golden Arches diet that we crave is opening us to steer clear from excessively consuming junk food for good. Maybe being bored and having too much time on our hands is what we need to finally be quiet enough to hear the still, small voice of God who has been waiting and waiting and waiting for us to listen. Yet yeah, this time is horrible and we all want it to end. But how might be God shaping you during this time to not just help you survive, but to transform you into a new creation so that you can more fully become who God created you to be? Yeah, there's a lot of uncertainty right now, but this we know, you are here and God is here and you can't separate God's activity from God's presence. You can't do that any more than you can separate heat from flame. God radiates love because God is love. God is here with you right now. So, how is God loving you? Not, is God loving you, but how is God loving you? 
because that shepherding love is on the job and it's here to stay. What would your life look like if you more fully trusted that love? How would you change if you more fully lived into God's love by sharing yourself in love? By opening your heart and soul to more fully receive and extend all that God seeks to give you and accomplish through you? How would your life change if you truly lived the truth of the 23rd Psalm? Easter means that our Savior has conquered death. Surely he can conquer everything else. And that applies to all of us, no exceptions. That applies to you. So live with faith into that truth. Hang tough while being tender. Trust God to see you through it all. Trust your good shepherd whose love shall prevail. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, in a dangerous world, we thank you for your shepherding care. Continue to gather and keep us in your love during this pandemic. We pray for the whole church that we may be strengthened in devotion to your word and in service to those who are least, last, and lost. Make us eager to do your will and walk in your ways of compassion, generosity, and peace. We pray for the people of the world, for all nations and all in positions of authority. We pray especially for our President Donald and our Governor Eric, during this time of trial, that they may lead us wisely and well. We pray for the sick and those in distress, for their families and all who are combating the coronavirus, that your healing may abound, restoring us all to the fullness of health, life, and joy. We pray for all in the medical and healing professions EMTs, nursing home aides, and all essential workers that you would protect and bless them as they serve to bless us all. We pray for all who grieve, for all who are distressed in mind and spirit, for business owners with financial worries, for all who work, who are concerned about covering their bills, for students whose studies are disrupted, for the elderly who are isolated, for the needy whose plight is worsened by these times, for the agencies whose mission it is to help and whose funds are strained, for our families and ourselves as we weather this storm and for these persons and concerns which we now name silently before you. Shepherding God, receive these prayers which we offer in the name of our Savior who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is, I Serve a Risen Savior. It's sung by our choir director, Jenny Fights Swick. Jesus lives
face today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. In And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy blasts. The day of his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow he lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O oh Christians, lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how. Receive now the charge and the benediction. The 23rd Psalm is only six verses long. You might have some extra time on your hands these days. I encourage you each day to read that Psalm and let it speak to you. You might even memorize it. Some of us had to do that as kids and we didn't much like it then, but I'm so glad to have this good part of God's word within me each day, letting me know of my Savior's love that is going to see me and you and all of us all the way home. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn a shining face toward you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>